Good morning, my name is Chari Amparo and I'm from the Global Alliance for Rabies Control. So today I'll be talking about the stepwise approach towards rabies elimination assessment or the SARA assessment and rabies elimination work plan development. Also, I want to start with this map. This map is from WHO and it shows the endemicity of dog rabies and dog transmitted human rabies as of 2016. The countries in blue are those that are still endemic and as you can see, there are still a lot of countries that are blue and almost all of them are in Africa and Asia. Now we all know that vaccinating at least 70% of at-risk dogs is enough to eliminate dog rabies. However, we also know that this is not a straightforward task. Achieving the target, particularly in developing countries, is a complicated process. There are areas where focused campaigns have been ongoing for many years, yet rabies transmission still persists. In 2015, WHO, FAO, OIE, and GARC released the Global Framework for the Elimination of Dog-Mediated Human Rabies. It contains a comprehensive list of activities based on the five pillars of rabies elimination, sociocultural, technical, organization, political, and resources. But where do we start the process? How do we know how far a country really is in their efforts? And how can we further advance those efforts? The SARA tool overcomes these issues by defining a clear set of activities that need to be addressed and provides a chronological order to them. The SARA tool is a Microsoft Excel-based monitoring and evaluation framework, and it provides a practical guidance on how to start or expand rabies control activities that are needed to control and eliminate dog-mediated rabies. It also provides as foundation for the development of a clear, well-constructed national strategy. So it is simple. It consists of a list of questions that are answerable by yes or no for whether certain activities or actions have been completed. These activities provide measurable steps in a chronological order. And we define chronological in terms of activities starting small and scaling up in terms of coverage and frequency. The activities outlined in SARI are grouped into different categories or components. And all of these fit into the five pillars mentioned earlier in the global framework of rabies elimination. So we have prevention and control, data collection and analysis, laboratory diagnosis, dog population management, information education and communication, legislation, and the cross-cutting issues. So the SARI will help you to First, of develop or revise your national strategy, develop a medium-term work plan, demonstrate progress, and of course, highlight successes. So this is a visual represent representation of SARE. It consists of six stages, from stage zero to stage five. Stage zero is there is no information available, but rabies is suspected to be present. In stage one, there is some data collection and analysis in at least some parts of the country. And typically at this stage, there's no or limited funding allocated to rabies. In stage two, the activities in stage one continue to evolve, and there is now a development of the national strategy based on improved understanding of the rabies epidemiology. Stage three is the full implementation of the national strategy. Here, no human rabies cases are being reported. In stage four, there are now no dog rabies cases being reported. And in stage five, the freedom from human and dog rabies. So how does it work? So initially, you would be asked to complete a country report. The country report will include details of rabies-related activities and status from different sectors of the government. This report will help you answer this area assessment more efficiently. There are three major outputs of the SARA assessment. The first is a list of completed or accomplished activities. So this list can be used for both advocacy and for lobbying for acquisition of funding required to ensure progress towards rabies elimination. The other two major outputs are the list of pending activities and the country stage. The country stage. So our next step would now be to go over the list of identified pending activities and decide on how to complete them, who will complete them, and when this will be done. So all of this information will be used to then populate the rabies work plan. 
So there are four main details you will, you will encounter when accomplishing this salary assessment. First is the questions answerable by yes or no, definitions and terminology, some comments or notes, and the salary stage. So it's very important that each activity has been answered by yes or no or I don't know. So we define yes as the activity having been completed 100% and no means the activity has not been completed or is partially complete. It is better to be conservative in your responses, meaning it's better to mark the activity as a no. So this is because partially completed activities marked as no will appear in the work plan and therefore will be earmarked for funding in the future. So for definitions in terminology, there are some questions that have additional explanations. So there are links there provided do critical concepts or definitions of terms that you can click. There are also some questions that have additional comments. So these will either give you examples or more information or request specific information from you. The last is the SARI stage. So this is important to note because it will help you in answering the question. The lower the stage is, for example, stage zero or stage one, the more general the activity and the easier it is to accomplish. The activities in the higher stages are more detailed and more specific. The practical work plan. So typically when we, typically when we think of developing Ravi's work plans, we would think at least a year's worth of meetings and workshops. So one major advantage of the SARI assessment is this process would take only about a week. The practical work plan towards achieving rabies elimination automatically generates a work plan based on the completed SARI assessment. So based on two of the outputs of the SARI assessment, which are the pending activities and the country stage, we have the gener generic work plan. So the country will then further refine this work plan, after which it would now have the Gantt charts, costing, and key performance indicators or KPIs. So I will not be talking about the GD rep, but it's basically another tool developed by USCDC that will help in estimating costs of a release program. So now we have the country specific work plan. For the next few slides, we'll be talking about the process of refining this generic work plan and developing your own country specific work plan. So for each pending activity identified during the SARA assessment, we need to define the responsible authority, customize objectives from the default ones provided in the generic work plan, and set a time frame based on the SARA stage. A responsible authority needs to be identified for each pending activity. The responsible authority is the ministry or department that will initiate the activity delegate tasks to the various partners, and be responsible for reporting progress. But this does not mean that they are solely responsible for delivering the entire activity. The time frame also needs to be set for each activity. So this is the number of years needed to complete the activity. Looking at the objectives will help you decide on the appropriate time frame. In the tool, we have already default of objectives that are automatically populated for each activity. So they provide an overview of the suggested steps that need to be taken. They can be customized depending on the country's needs. The SARI stage is important in helping you determine the time frame for each activity. So as mentioned earlier, the lower the SARI stage, the quicker it should be to complete the activity. Higher stage activities are detailed and specific, thus requiring more time to complete. So in summary, from the list of pending activities in the SARA assessment, the country would need to refine the generic work plan, automatically generated by identifying responsible authorities, customizing objectives, and adding a time frame for each activity to develop their own country-specific work plan. The country-specific work plan will then have these three major outputs. The Gantt charts, which will provide the clear timeline for planning and implementation of programmatic activities. The costing, 
which will provide a, uh, an estimate for, of the cost for the elimination of rabies using mass dog vaccination. So this is important because activities are more likely to receive funding if they have a clear budget. And key performance indicators, which allows for stakeholders to measure progress within each activity. So countries may or may not have their own national strategic plans. These national strategies are important political documents that are vital for governance and advocacy purposes. They, however, rely on a common approach and often lack the finer granular details. The SARI will help to either develop a national strategy or if your country already has a strategy, it can help develop the work plan which is the actionable or the executable part of the national strategy. It will provide the granular detail for each of the broad objectives in the national strategic plan. So in order for elimination, rabies elimination to be successful, we need to plan. And for that plan to be successful, we need to break down our actions to manageable steps. The SARI tool does just that by helping us develop a clear, well-defined national strategy and by helping us identify which activities to prioritize and how to scale up and progress from there. Thank you.